So today we're going to talk just for a moment about Good Syndrome and give you just a very quick look at what this particular immune defect is all about. I have to tell you first, it's different from all of the other immune deficiencies that we talk about in the Immune Deficiency Foundation. That's because it's really made differently. It's something which is we consider to be an acquired immune defect. It's not something that you were born with, but it is something that all the immunologists that you'll probably ever meet are very, very familiar with because it's handled pretty much in the same way as the immune deficiencies are that one is born with. So first of all, what is Good Syndrome? Good Syndrome is really named for Dr. Robert A. Good, who first described it in 1955 in Minnesota. And the reason why is that he saw a patient who had a tumor of the thymus gland. It was very curious because the patient had very low serum proteins. They didn't really know about gamma globulins at that very moment and had not looked at that particular part. But what they did know is that these men kept coming into the hospital repeatedly and had 17 additional attacks of pneumonia in the next four years, which of course is a very miserable clinical history. And on the final admission, one of the final ones, then he had an absence of gamma globulin in the blood. And of course that was very, very strange. What does the thymus have to do with gamma globulin? It was a very odd situation. And so a manuscript came out and Dr. Good wrote that the simultaneous occurrence of this acquired a gamma globulinemia and a benign thymoma, because it wasn't a cancer, in a human being suggested that the thymus might participate in the control of antibody formation. And up until that time, that was not a known fact. No one really had taken into consideration the fact that thymus might have something to do with this type or formation of antibody in the blood or even gamma globulin. So first of all, let's take a step back and say, well, what is the thymus anyway? The thymus is a gland that lies just below the breastbone and it's technically part of the endocrine system. And it's very, very large in children, infants and children. But then as you get older, it becomes smaller and almost absent in adults. So it's not completely absent, but it's very, very tiny in adults. And one of the things that we know, now we understand this better, is that lymphocytes called T cells go from the bone marrow and then they home into the thymus where they live. And that's mostly what the thymus is composed of. It's composed of these T lymphocytes. And then those mature cells then leave the thymus and they travel all around the blood where you can find them in the blood. You can find them in the spleen and you can find them all around the intestinal tract. Something There's something interesting about what the thymus is actually doing. And what is that? We consider the thymus kind of a schoolhouse for T cells. In other words, a thymus in the thymus, the immature T cells, um, which of course, as I said a second ago, are tiny uh, white cells, different types of white cells. What they learn in the schoolhouse is they learn to attack microbes and foreign cells. But the interesting thing too, is that in the thymus, there's another type of education which takes place, which is that those T cells are told, no, 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 you cannot be autoimmune. You have to take away the autoimmune qualities. Any T cell that is autoimmune has to be eliminated. And so that's what the thymus is doing. The immune system produces tremendous numbers of T cells during childhood. And of course it requires very few T cells really after puberty, partly because in fact, your T cells after this time have already gone to school and they already pretty much know their environment. And that's one of the reasons that the thymus shrinks throughout childhood and then it gets to be uh, not quite so required as you become an adult because of course the learning process has taken place. So what then is a thymoma? So thymoma is a tumor of the thymus gland. It's pretty rare. They're very, very slow growing for the most part. And of course it's made of these thymic cells. It's also made of some of the epithelia or the skin cells that are inside the thymus, but the majority of them are these, you know, immature or young T cells. And how do you know if you have one? It's usually found more or less accidentally as a mass in the chest X-ray. Just all of a sudden, your chest X-ray shows something which normally should not be there right in the center of the chest. Usually it's benign, but it can be malignant. And it's much more common in adults. It's extremely uncommon to be present ever in a child. The usual age of a person who has a thymoma is usually in the 40s to say the 60s. It's really something of the middle years. 
So what's wrong with a thymoma? Again, for lots of reasons that we don't understand, it's associated with having infections. And the other thing is that it can also be associated with other conditions. You've probably heard of myasthenia gravis, which is a neurological disease. You might or might not have ever heard of pure red cell aplasia, but that's very, very severe anemia. And the last one is a very strange and very odd and very difficult skin disease called pemphigus. Sometimes it's associated with that. Or in some cases, again, rarely, it's associated with no gamma globulin, very, very low gamma globulin in the blood. And that's when we term it the good syndrome after Dr. Robert A. Good. Now, what don't we know? The honest truth is there's much more that we don't know than what we do know. If you think about it, this was first described in 1955. That's really a very, very long time ago. And yet we honestly still don't know why the immune system does what it does when there has been a thymoma. There's some unusual property that those cells have acquired. One of them, it seems to happen, is that there are some unusual infections that occur. And that's because somehow a person has lost some of the protective proteins in the blood called cytokines. And why would that be? Sometimes that's because, in fact, the antibody making machinery has in fact made an antibody that shouldn't have happened. In other words, an antibody to the cytokines and that takes away the cytokine properties and it means that you are really lacking those particular antibody or those, those fighting proteins. And so that's kind of an autoimmune disease and it's extremely difficult. But why is there hypogammaglobulinemia? Why do the gamma globulin molecules disappear? And why do the antibody producing B cells disappear? Again, this is still a mystery. And after all these years, after these five decades later, we still don't understand this portion of why it's become an immune defect of this sort. Why does it look like agammaglobulinemia or hypogammaglobulinemia? We honestly don't know, but there is some obviously still a lot of work to be done to discover what is the connection here. So what do you do about it? First thing, generally, the thymoma is removed because, in fact, it could be cancerous. But the second thing to know is that even if it is removed, it doesn't actually solve the immune defect. Again, very odd, isn't it? It should have solved it, but it does not. If a person is hypogammaglobulinemic, then, of course, you're going to be giving gamma globulin, as for other antibody deficiency diseases. And sometimes you need continuous antibiotics to protect against infections. And you might need other antibiotics for very unusual infections. And then of course, if there's any autoimmune condition, then you have to treat that according to any normal method that you would normally use in clinical medicine. So this is really the summary, which is that the thymus is really an essential part of the immune system. And it is the place where young T cells learn what is foreign and to be killed and what is not to be destroyed. But a thymoma is often associated with autoimmunity and in some rare cases with this immune defect called Good syndrome. And the treatment of course will be loss of antibody production will be giving gamma globulin. But I have to tell you, there's so much that we don't know still about what the thymus gland is actually doing and how does it depress gamma globulin producing cells? And I have to say, we honestly still don't know after all these years so clearly there will be a breakthrough on some occasion. And then of course, everyone will finally begin to understand this very curious organ and what it does do and what it should not do and what we might do for better direction of that particular interesting organ. So hopefully these comments are of help to you. And if more information, I hope you'll be attending the session that we hope to be having on Good Syndrome, which will be a little bit more um, uh, complete in the fall. Thank you very much.